So this is where we'll wrap up this time. We uh, will take them through uh, assembly all the way through finish. Uh, we have the, the lighter finished one, which is a uh, minwax pecan on the white oak with Osmo. And we have the more traditional finished one, which is a uh, really a four-part process of alcohol-based dye, a sealer, a gel a glaze, and then General finish his armor seal to wrap it up. So we'll go through all those processes and we'll call these done. I appreciate you watching. So this is where we left off. The uh, carcasses are done and the top is positioned and fitted. And we're going to proceed with finishing these up. Now that the carcasses are together, we can go ahead and cut the shells to the final length. Uh, first taking a clean cut off of one edge and then using the stop block to position them all to end up the same. Likewise, now that uh, we know the final dimension, we can go ahead and uh, do a very small rip to, on the edge to get them cut to width. One thing I always dislike with uh, uh, adjustable shells is, is them rattling and sliding around on the adjustment pin. So I use a uh, very small uh, router bit to cut a relief right where the, uh, the holes of the adjustable pins will be. And what that does is allow them to sit flat, as you can see. Clean it out and it's good to go. Or the shelf pin to sit in. So with the uh, relief cut, They don't move. Now on to sanding. So the last step with the shelves is to get them finished. Uh, it starts with a good scraping, uh, then planing the uh, edges, and then finally uh, chamfering slightly uh, on the corners, and a good sanding all around, and they're uh, ready to go. top is held on with dowels, which is probably the, the simplest way since it's basically large ingrain posts. Uh, and excuse the uh, shaky camera here, uh, you, I, guess I learned a lesson not to put the camera on the board you're drilling into. Uh, pretty straightforward drill in, uh, mark it, and the assembly is uh, really easy. I did put glue on the uh, the arch piece and that's the only part that's glued on the top. The uh, glue up is pretty straightforward. Uh, the first dowel is kind of a pain to get in because it's uh, blind, but once one's in, the rest are uh, going to follow suit. And I kept the uh, cutoff pieces from the arch to use as a clamping call and uh, used it to uh, hold just that front edge down. Once dry, I used a card scraper as a spacer so that I would avoid cutting into uh, the surface of the case, keep the saw elevated a little bit, and then just uh, flush it off with sandpaper. I've got a, a mock-up of a corbel uh, drawn on some notepad paper that I use spray adhesive to stick to some stock and I'm rough cutting it out and I will clean it up with uh, card scrapers and sandpaper and see how it fits. If, since I'm happy with it, I will use it to mark uh, several others and here I am just rough cutting these others uh, within a 16 inch of the line.
the prototype corbel was uh, glued to a block so that I could hold it and then double-sided tape was applied to the top and then using a patterning bit I was able to simply cut out the rest of the corbels to match that one so I don't have to finish all of them uh, and I get a bunch of identical copies. All right, so the pattern, which we sacrificed because we glued it to the guide rail, let us make Two sets of corbels plus a spare. Now we'll color match them to the uh, cases so that we'll pick out the best for each case. Uh, sand them and put them on. I made a spacer block to position the corbel uh, exactly in the middle and used it to uh, get them to hold until I could get a couple clamps on. They're purely decorative and so there's really no, no need for complex joinery. Uh, two clamps, a couple hours, and they're set. At this point, the, uh, the assembly is ready for, for final review. I go through each corner looking for, for excess glue, scrape it out, sand it down, uh, go over the entire carcass this way, and make sure you, uh, you, know, you hit everything. A little bit of glue squeeze out is really nasty if you're going to stain the piece. Now you can see here I've already chamfered the uh, edges, and uh, so I'll get to that in a second. But I use some 220 paper that is adhesive, and it, I, I uh, wrap it around a block, which gives a lot of very, very clean corners to get into very tight areas. So this is the lighter finished piece that uh, we're starting here, and this is Minwax Pecan, which is uh, my personal favorite. Uh, it's one I've used for all the furniture I've made for myself uh, using the white oak. Uh, first step is to take the final sanded piece, uh, apply a uh, you know, moderate to light coat, uh, then wipe off the excess and let it dry. After it's set just a bit, I like to go over it with a clean white cloth to get off any excess and smooth out any areas where it may have pulled up uh, to avoid any blemishes or blotching. The casework is so big it's really hard to film working on it, but uh, it gets the same treatment. Uh, and here I am wiping down after the initial finish application or the initial stain application. This is the first coat of finish for the lighter finished one. It's Osmo Poly Wax Oil, my personal favorite. Uh, I've got a lot of experience using it. Absolutely love it. Uh, the key is as thin as you can get it. Uh, I use a white uh, uh, rubbing pad and put on a very thin, even coat. Excuse the focus, but uh, I wanted to show you that the same process applies to the uh, carcass, but you've got to be very careful with uh, intricate areas so you don't get a buildup. You're looking to get just a very smooth roll uh, uh, layer. Now note that the, you've got some stain color coming through in the pad. Uh, I always throw the pad away after the first coat, and you should, by rights, try and uh, work out of a separate container. Plus, you get to see my really attractive finish applying coat. Coat number two goes on just like coat one. Uh, keep it thin, keep it uh, from building up. Uh, work it in and just cover the whole piece. All right, we've got uh, three coats of Osmo on after one coat of the stain. And it's uh, really got a nice finish at this point. But there's still your usual uh, small nibs or other subtle artifacts and uh, what I do to make sure whoop, there's a dog uh, what I do to make sure you get a really great finish is rub them out prior to the fourth coat with uh, wool lube uh, there's a couple different manufacturers of wool lube this is the one I use uh, God help me if I can pronounce that uh, but it's pretty straightforward liberally it on and all this is is a lubricant that will allow the wool to cut off those nibs and the end result is uh, 
really silky smooth, and this is uh, triple aught steel wool. So I'm going to go over the whole uh, piece, then we're going to put the fourth coat on, and this one will be done. Just a correction, that's four aught steel wool. When you're rubbing out the carcass, you've got to be really careful with corners. You'll eat off the finish if you're too aggressive, but you've got to basically uh, rub out the entire piece. Uh, it's optional. It's not something that Osmo says you have to do, uh, but I find that it really drastically improves the end product. So after you're done uh, rubbing out the piece with uh, triple lot steel wool, the steel wool will leave a lot of uh, residue and you want to give everything a good wipe down because otherwise that's what's going to remain. Uh, so go over all the surfaces as well as you can. Now some people like the, uh, the knockdown matte finish and stop right there uh, and say that's done. The, that's not a bad look and it has a wonderful silky feel to it. Uh, I personally like to put one more ultra thin coat on top of this uh, just to get uh, a little bit of that satin back up uh, versus the, the sort of flat out look. Uh, so what I'll do is let the wool lube, uh, the little bit of moisture that's in that flash off and as soon as it's dry I'll wipe down one more time and put the last coat on. The last coat will be as thin as humanly possible. Alright, the fourth coat after the rub out is I guess where the art is with Osmo. The thinner you can get it the better uh, and so you're going to go over and you'll feel the, the matte surface pulling the pad and you simply keep gliding over until that pull disappears and you're trying to go as thin as you possibly can. So with the uh, first one done with the Minwax uh, product, which I did to match the rest of the furniture I've already made, uh, this one's going to be the trans tent. So I've got 300 milliliters of uh, alcohol and I'm going to put in 9 milliliters of trans tent light brown. Here we're putting on the alcohol-based trans tent, and the uh, alcohol allows it to penetrate really quick. So you got to move fast. You got to keep your your eyes open for buildup or other areas. But uh, it's an incredible finish to use because it will flash off uh, nearly instantly and be ready for the next coat. With the base dye applied. Uh, now, with the look we're going for, the next step is to seal it so the next stain will be just a glaze on top of a seal coat. And for that, I'm using uh, Armor Seal Seal a Cell. And I could say that five times fast. Now the seal a cell instructions say not to sand until after your first coat of top coat. However, since we're going to put a glaze on, we want to knock down any nibs or other areas. Otherwise, there'll be uh, little little spots that attract the glaze. So, uh, contrary to instructions, we're going to sand uh, before the top coat. With the seal a cell dry. The, the wood is basically sealed and uh, it's got one layer of transient stain under the sealer. Uh, so now I'm applying a dark uh, gel stain as a glaze on top of the sealer. The, what's going to happen is it's just going to accumulate in those small pits and valleys uh, and not really penetrate. Uh, put it on, uh, you know, medium level. You want, you want good coverage uh, and then wipe it off. This is a great example of, of what the glaze does. Uh, the left piece is unglazed, the right piece has the glaze, uh, and you can see where it builds up in these smaller areas uh, and, and really is a nice effect. The uh, general finish is sealer, 
then one coat of General Finish's gel based stain and now we're going to start the uh, finish coats. I'm going to start with this uh, white pad. If it turns out to be too thin, I'll just switch to a piece of cotton. Yeah, that's going to look fantastic. Much like Osmo, the, uh, the case gets the same treatment, being very careful not to get build up in the corners. And also, like the uh, first case, your first coat's really going to ruin the pad and you want to work out of a, a separate container because there will be some pigment uh, residual coming up. Armor Seal is a more traditional finish than Osmo. It wants you to sand between coats, so we're going to hit it with uh, 320 uh, very lightly using a backer pad for the flat areas and then carefully sanding by hand for all the intricate areas. Second coat, uh, much like the first, a uh, little thinner, clean pad, also working out of a fresh container. Uh, just like Osmo or any other hand rub finish, uh, work it based on its own viscosity, keep it uh, thin if possible. Now rather than sand after the second coat, I'm going to go ahead and rub it out with 4 aught steel wool to go ahead and knock down the uh, nibs or other issues so that the third coat will be the final coat. And it really only needs three coats because you started with a coat of uh, a sealer. In fact, the directions technically say uh, one coat of sealer and two coats of finish. Uh, but I'm going to rub it out and then put on a third coat. Third coat, much like before, keep it thin, spread it out. Uh, you'll see that I don't mind putting my hand in it. It's not a big deal. You simply uh, go back over it. It's more or less like spreading oil at this point. And you'll find that uh, you can tell when you're done because the finish is very reluctant to take on anymore. Uh, it, it starts to uh, really resist wetting out. So as the last coat dry, if you'll excuse the uh, shaky hand camera work, you get a, an idea of what kind of beauty the glaze and the four-step process builds out. It, it really accentuates the, uh, the grain of the piece, but it also knocks down the pop of the Ray Fleck. Focus! There we go. Uh, really a fantastic finish, uh, but I'm also extremely happy with the uh, traditional uh, finish that I use, which is the, the more pecan that lets the Rayflex pop. Uh, so all in all, they both look fantastic. So here they both are. The uh, lighter one's ready to go upstairs and take my books, and the darker one, I believe, is ready to go off to my furniture selling friend. Uh, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something.